Ooh, it's finally vacation time. I'm heading out. <clears throat> so the video I have for you this week is a little bit different. Uh, this is a person who is a longtime viewer of the channel and a fan, and she reached out and said, you know, we have different channels, but I really like to collaborate. I said, what kind of channel do you have? And she said, tarantulas. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to meet another great video creator, and it's all coming up right after this. Here we go. Ooh. All right, finally home again. Hey, YouTube, this is Tech Tech, and today we're going to do something really different. I've introduced other channels on this channel before, but I've always kept it within the aquarium hobby. But I've been really curious lately. There's been a lot of other channels uh, with a lot of other interesting things. Like I've recently found uh, Ants Canada. If you've never seen that channel, it's really interesting and bizarre. So when Kat reached out to me, I was really excited to work with her. Let's, let's introduce you to her real quick. My name is Tarantula Cat, and I have over 50 arachnids. Peck Tech and I have teamed up to just interview each other and do this little collab. I thought it'd be really cool to bring some fish keeping questions to my audience, and he thought it would be very interesting to bring some of my arachnid keeping to his audience. If you guys enjoy this video, definitely come check out my channel. I do a lot of different videos on a lot of different kind of animals, but primarily I focus on tarantulas. Now I know that there's a very big stigma surrounded around spiders and arachnids, scorpions. A lot of people will see them as pests, but I'm hoping that by answering some of these very good questions that he asked me, I can entice people outside of the hobby and at least spark an interest or an understanding in it. Now my first question is, why and when did you decide to share your hobby on YouTube? So there's many different reasons on why I started my YouTube channel. One of the main ones is to bring education to people outside of the hobby, kind of show that spiders aren't these awful, scary things. Most tarantulas actually aren't very venomous at all, and there is currently no documented case of a fatal tarantula bite. I also wanted to share my animals with people on the internet who relate and appreciate them, because it's very hard to find people, just normal people, who will have an appreciation for this big spider. Coming online and showing a new species that I'm keeping and having um, people respond positively and appreciate the animal and share the excitement is a very special thing and I'm so glad that I decided to start YouTube. So how many exotic pets do you keep? I mainly keep tarantulas. I have around 50 arachnids, actually probably more than that. Halloween moon crabs, a bearded dragon, crested gecko, a ball python, rosy boa, two corn snakes, a dead leaf mantis. A very big variety, but um, mainly tarantulas. Can you keep arachnids in a community environment, kind of like we do fish? So you actually can keep some species of tarantulas in a communal setting, like an aquarium. However, it is much trickier and most of the time for certain species, you will end up with one big fat spider. Besides for one species that we know, and that would be M. balfouri, they've been noted to protect each other, to guard each other while the other is molting and certain things like that. So it's actually very cool and interesting that one species out of the hundreds, possibly thousands that we know of, um, can be kept communally. So are people scared to come over to your house with all those crawly critters around? So going back to the fact that there is a stigma surrounding spiders, there are definitely some people who are hesitant to come over. However, I actually keep all of the animals in our bedroom besides our fish tank and one of our snakes. So when people come over, they wouldn't even realize that this, there's this many um, spiders in here. If I know somebody is not comfortable around my spiders, I just don't bring them out. What do you look for in a good tarantula specimen? 
So it's hard to say exactly what you would look for in a good tarantula specimen, but if you are new to this and you are looking to buy your first tarantula, be very careful that you don't wind up with a mature male. The way you can identify a mature male is usually tibial hooks, which are hooks at the end of their front legs, emboli, which are the presence of the male sexual organ on the end of their pedipalps. The reason why I say to watch out for a mature male is because they do not live very long. They only live usually around a year after maturing and usually they stop eating and they just wither away slowly. So it's very sad when I find out somebody got a mature male as their first tarantula. I hate to break that news to them because uh, like I said, they just don't live long and usually they've been overcharged. Because spiders are everywhere, do you ever just find one and make it into a pet? Yes, I actually keep two different ones that I found in our place. Ones like I found a very young wolf spider earlier this spring that I've kept and watched grow and I love it and yeah, it's great. And then I've also caught a jumping spider that I have kept. What would you say the biggest misconception about your hobby is? I guess a lot of people are very, I don't know, they, they don't understand why uh, people with tarantulas will spend money on one, why they would ever want one because you can't, um, I hear a lot like you can't interact with it and stuff like that. I always compare it to keeping fish. Before I got into the tarantula hobby, I did keep fish, mainly betas, and um, the upkeep was a lot. Um, with tarantulas, the upkeep is not much at all. I don't know anybody with just one tarantula. I don't really know many people with less than 10 tarantulas. I know a lot of people who have more than 100 tarantulas. And you think that sounds like a lot and you think that sounds like a lot of work, but it's really not because they eat maybe like once every week or two and they need their water refilled like once every week or two. So the maintenance is very low and the cost of keeping them is also very low. Now people that keep fish are called aquarists. What are people that keep spiders called? Is it arachnidists? We mainly just call each other tarantula keepers or hobbyists. We don't have a cool name. I think you should start calling yourself an arachnidist just because, I mean, we could start something. I think it's, we could start it here. Now, is there a species that you're chasing now that you'd really like to have? I am always looking for a new species. If you're in this hobby, you're always, 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 always going to be looking for a new species. There's new species that get discovered. There's new species that make it here to America. Usually they hit Europe first um, and then they come here. Um, you know, I have some tarantulas that cost five or ten dollars. Um, there are tarantulas that go for more than $600 for sure, um, but the more people breed them, the more the price goes down. So sometimes you're chasing a species for a very long time, you don't want to spend $600 for it. You have to wait a few years for the price to drop. So what's a great beginning spider and uh, what does it cost to kind of get started? A great beginner tarantula is a youthless species red. Now, let me tell you, it is not the cheapest. I plan to spend at least $100 if you're looking for a decent sized specimen. Um, the younger ones will cost less, but they will be smaller than your pinky nail for possibly years. So there's more readily available species like Aphonopilma calcodes. Those come from like Arizona, Aphonopilma hensi. There's um, a ton of great species to start off with. Grammastola pulchropes, they're very big. The cost of keeping them is not much at all. In order to uh, house them comfortably, you don't have to spend a lot of money. In fact, it's very, it, it was very hard for me to get used to this because um, in the fish keeping hobby, the bigger the aquarium, the less upkeep, the better, right? Well, in the tarantula hobby, that is not the case. They spend their lives in holes. They're happy in their hole. Um, so all they really want is a hide and lots of dirt and uh, a water dish. Unless it's arboreal, then they're going to want sticks and stuff to build their webs. But for the most part, most terrestrials and fossorials are just happy with a bunch of dirt and it's very inexpensive. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple different housing options and yeah. So you can use something like this to house your tarantula in if you want. These are a bit more expensive though. Uh, 
The tarantulas don't really care about what they're in. A lot of people use these, but these run like $40. So a lot of people, especially with bigger um, collections than me, they will just go get like one of those big tubs of cheese puffs and turn that into an arboreal tarantula enclosure because they don't care. And then this is a very small baby tarantula. Um, I get these little boxes from the container store for like a dollar and a piece of wood and some dirt and this is a very happy spider. Now this will grow into one of these so you know you have to rehouse them as they grow but um, this is a very inexpensive idea. Here's another. This is an OBT. This is possibly one of the most offensive tarantulas and it is very venomous but um, don't let that scare you away. They're actually very beautiful tarantulas at the same time. So this is a very nice little Amok box. You can also find these at the container store and a friend of mine modified it with this vent. This is awesome. This is a great setup for it for now. Um, this will grow, of course. Um, the tarantulas, they, they start out little, but they do get quite big. So this is another option for uh, another size tarantula. This is a great set up because it has quite a bit of dirt and then it has a very nice hide. This tarantula actually spends a lot of time in here and the pumpkin and that's really cool. I'm pretty sure this whole setup costs something around like $10, $15 so that's always a good option. And then this is a full grown tarantula. This is a female E. marinus or skeleton leg. Her enclosure is very webbed up. She has quite a bit of dirt. Actually, under all of this is a flower pot and um, just some leaves. She keeps webbing up her water dishes, so <laughs> she has multiple water dishes that have just been webbed up. And we'll go ahead and feed her and see if she'll come out. Oh. <laughs> so there she is. She got it. Unfortunately, I think that's as far out as we're going to come today. Kat, thank you so much. It's been really fun talking to you and thank you for watching all these years. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much Peck Tech for letting me be on your channel. And if you guys want to come check out my channel, please do. I will actually be posting his responses to my questions. Um, it's definitely awesome to be working with him. I have watched his channel for years and years and years. Like I said, I don't really keep any aquariums besides the one anymore. It was just so much upkeep and tarantulas are easier and my interest just kind of went to them. It's like I found my true love, but I found it through fish. And so yeah, I will always have a very special place for fish. Thank you guys. Okay, folks, I hope you found that entertaining. Uh, Kat's a great person. She's got a terrific personality really really fun channel i've actually really enjoyed i've been going through her videos for a couple of weeks now and i really like it who knows maybe i'll get a spider a lot of fear to conquer <laughs> but i'll keep watching maybe maybe we'll see I, I might maybe like see maybe starting with maybe the praying mantis i really liked the praying mantis i thought that was cool who knows we'll see so at some point this weekend i'm going to try and do a little impromptu live stream uh, I, I never announce my live streams. I'm going to start doing them more often. And if you want to catch it, if you want to catch it live, be sure to ring the bell. Ding the bell. Hit the bell. Ding my dong. So if you get notifications, you don't want to miss out on being first. I know it's a big thing because I keep seeing comments that say first. So I, if you want the prestige of being there first, get that notification. More than likely next week, I'll have a more formal video for the aquatic experience. Me and the, the 40 other YouTubers that are there this weekend. Now there's going to be videos everywhere, but eh, maybe you'll enjoy mine. Okay, folks, until next time, follow your bliss. Keep a clean tank or spider enclosure. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. A right in this, a right, a right in this, right, a right in this, right, a right night, a right noid, a right nerd, a right nerd. I, if there's not a YouTube channel called a right nerd, there needs to be. Okay, there's a fish nerd, there's fish nerd vlogs. There should be a, an a right nerd or a right nerd vlogs. I think that would be appropriate. Think about it.